Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs. So today guys, I have come up with a very interesting topic that is people are asking about how to switch from manual to automation. What are the basic things that Naveen, uh, we have to learn in automation. It's not like 100 automation tools that I have to learn. I've prepared a list, a very simple list you can see on my whiteboard. And someone is already having some knowledge on Selenium, for example, let's see, and then they really want to learn the next automation thing. What exactly the next thing that we have to learn. So according to me, that is the current market standard. These tools should be there in your bucket. So let's start with that. So if you start with the basics of programming first, that without programming guys, you cannot survive in market and automation. It's very difficult to survive because basics of programming that how to write the basic logic, the basic fundamentals of any programming language that you can pick. I'm not forcing that okay, you have to learn about only Java or Python. It's totally your choice, but you have to think smartly. There are people in the market, they say that okay, the programming language doesn't matter. Of course, I totally agree with that, but you have to think smartly that which programming language for that particular tool is more popular, more demanding in the market, that is what you have to pick. So for example, let's say Selenium with Java is the best combination in the market. So we have to pick Selenium with Java as compared to Selenium Python or maybe Selenium with JavaScript. Then again, it's totally uh, individual choice at which language that you want to pick. But I would say without programming that you cannot learn automation, you cannot survive in automation, and you cannot be happy with automation if you don't know programming, basics of programming. So I would advise you, you can pick any language like Java, Python, JavaScript, C Sharp. In programming, you should know that if I ask you that, okay, hey, you have to pick uh, this particular data in which data uh, store or then which collection API you will be using. For example, let's say some dynamic data. In that case, which data structure or collection I'll be using in Java. So let's say I'm going to go with the maybe array list or maybe hash map and I really want to store the data in the form of a key and value pair format or let's say some e-commerce application I'm going to design. I'm going to automate and then I have to store the product metadata in the form of key and value pair format inside the hash map. It is a synchronized or not synchronized or hash table or uh, maybe a sorted data that I want to use that. In that case, guys, we have to think. You should know the logic. You should know the fundamental of the programming behind that. So for example, as a basic knowledge about how will you iterate an array, how will you write a for loop, how will you write a basic while loop, if else condition, conditional operators, the string manipulations you should know about it, and the basics of programming with respect to object-oriented programming you should know about it. What is polymorphism, overloading, overriding, uh, encapsulation, what are the basic design patterns are available, abstractions, interfaces, abstract classes, when to use, how to use. You should know about it because when you design the framework tomorrow, these things will help you a lot, right? And these are the common things. If you talk about uh, Java polymorphism, same thing will happen in Python and some other programming languages as well in that case. So programming is compulsory. After that, actually, I've divided uh, tech stack into three parts. One is web, one is second one is mobile, and then API. In the web, guys, that, uh, there are a lot of tools are available in the market in the web for web application point of view. If you are very new in automation and you really want to start, I would strictly advise that Recommend that you start with the web automation with Selenium, which is like more most demanding tool available in the market. It's a history of around 15 years in the market now. And then Selenium with Java, Selenium with Python, it's a really good combination. And you should know about all the basics of Selenium. And once the Selenium is done, maybe you can pick WebDriver, IO and Cypress with respect to JavaScript. So when you learn about Selenium, you should know about basics of core features of Selenium, how to design the framework, uh, you know, page object model design patterns, data driven, hybrid or, uh, you know, keyword driven framework. You should know about the locator strategies, XPath, CSS, how to interact with the uh, different browser locators and everything. You should know about all those things. So this is something very, very important guys that you have to pick. So I won't advise you to learn some high fund do things which are already available in the market, like Puppeteer or Test Project or maybe some other tools. There are no doubt about it. They are good. But if you really want to start your career with web automation, go with a Selenium. If you're really interested, maybe you can go with WebDriver IO and then the Cypress. Otherwise, every tool is important and every tool is great. But this is these three tools are, you know, the most uh, demanding tools for web automation point of view in the market. And it will give you a lot of confidence when you learn Selenium. Because Selenium is a tool where a lot of good community support is available, a lot of blogs, channels, resources, trainers are available for Selenium and people are supporting day and night and then you will get the confidence from these people automatically. So I would advise you go with Selenium initially, okay, with web automation. So the next one is guys that mobile automation. If you are coming from the Selenium background, I would advise you that go with the APM, which will help you to understand the APM and APM code as well. Most of the things are exactly same, Selenium and APM. 
and uh, iOS and Android is also supported by APM. It's an amazing tool, so supported by different programming languages like Java, Python, JavaScript and iOS and Android also it supports. If you're coming from Selenium background, most of the commands and the syntax will remain same in APM, although the infrastructure, oh sorry, uh, the architecture is slightly different as compared to Selenium, but it's a very easy tool to know about it. So if you are really looking for mobile uh, automation point of view, after Selenium, you can immediately jump to APM and then APM also you can pick any language. The advantage you will get if you, let's say for with Selenium, if you have worked with Java, the same language can be used over here with APM as well. So that is the advantage you will get to learn a specific programming language which is supported by Selenium. And the same language you can work with APM as well. And a lot of libraries you can utilize, reutilize over here with APM once again. So I would advise you to go with the APM after that. Then the APA part, this is the most important tech stack guys in your, in your profile, you should have it that uh, APA means your REST API automation or maybe a microservices automation. There are certain tools are available in the market. Uh, every company every day is that they are use, using a lot of APIs, maybe third party integration APIs or maybe some internal APIs or uh, uh, backend APIs are available to interact with some other system uh, within the team or outside of the team or maybe some other system you are integrating. So everything communication is happening through API. Without API, you cannot develop a dynamic web application or mobile application. So API is compulsory to know guys that these days it's not like you cannot say, okay, I know Selenium, but I don't know API then that doesn't look good because there are a lot of people, they know a web and API together in the market. So you should reach at that level as well. It's not a big deal. It's very simple to know about it. So I would advise you to go with the Postman. Postman is a very user friendly tool. Like everyone should know about Postman with respect to API automation or API hitting the API and getting the response. You can write some automation also with Postman with respect to JavaScript. But a Postman is a daily routine activity that when you're working with the APIs, you have to call a lot of get call, post call. You should know what are the basic authentication we have to pass. Uh, OAuth authentication 1.0, 2.0, a beer token, token ID, session ID, how to pass the header, what do you mean by cookies and everything, how to get the response different response code 200, 300, 201, 401, 404, 500, 503, 504, all those things you should know about it. It's very simple. When you work with these tools, automatically you will eventually you will get to know. Then if you really want to be, uh, write some automation with some really good library which is available in the market, I would go with the rest assured, which is like very popular. And a lot of companies, they have they are using rest assured. Uh, with Java, it's a D Java DSL library. It is not available with some other language, but with Python also they have separate library for that. With JavaScript and C sharp also they have a separate library for the uh, for the REST API automation. So guys, remember, REST API automation is a different, is a general term. REST Assured is a library in Java to automate the REST APIs. So that is what I would advise you to go with REST Assured and the Postman. It's a very very good combination. I would say that. Then if you have time or if you're really interested, I would just go with the HTTP client, OK HTTP Jersey client and the Karate also, which is quite famous. If you really want to write some codeless automation for your API, then you can use Karate. In fact, for web also, you can use Karate. So uh, you can write some test cases, some work in language over there with the form of feature file in Karate and then you can execute on OK with Karate. That is also again available in the market. Karate is available. Robot framework is also available. But I'm not writing robot framework as of now. I think these are the three tech stack. Basic tools are very much required. Everyone should have in their market. This is uh, according to the my market uh, research. What is the current situation in the market right now? <clears throat> Next thing is that infrastructure part and a DevOps, which is very, very important. If you're starting your career in automation or you are having some manual testing background and some basic knowledge of automation, you really want to uh, switch. Infrastructure and DevOps activities are very, very important these days. Those are the, those were the days are gone where uh, people were not bothered about the Jenkins pipeline. Five years back, Docker was not available. People were using Selenium Grid uh, locally on the local machine. That time, uh, cloud also was, was, not, uh, was not there in the market. So these days, everything is available on the cloud. People are creating the Docker images, handling the orchestrator with the help of uh, Kubernetes pods and Jenkins CICD pipelines, some advanced pipelines are available and then GitLab and GitHub. All such things are very much compulsory guys. I'm not saying you have to be rockstar in all these things, but have some basic sense. You should know how exactly these tools, they integrate, they work, they communicate with each other and then how exactly as a QA or automation point of view, we can participate in our, our main CICD pipeline over there. So this is something very, very important to know about it. 
you should know that okay hey uh, how exactly uh, where exactly my regression test automation suite that i have created where exactly it will fit into the main cicd pipeline uh, if i say that okay hey you have to execute your test cases on the docker container so you should know how to create a dockerized grid over there how to create a docker image over there it's not like every time you're writing a selenium automation framework you have designed a nice framework and every time you're running on a local machine on your browser which is which is getting launched in your local machine only if i say that okay no the entire team member all the team members in that team they have to execute the entire automation test suite through the jenkins on the cloud or maybe through the docker container on the dockerized grid then you are blank and then you don't know how to do this so these are people are expecting companies are expecting such kind of a skill set and you should know about it it's very very simple guys so uh, then the github github is also very important when i take interviews people are not at all aware about the basic github commands they don't know how to check in the code they don't know how to push the code they don't know how to commit the code how to fetch the code what do you mean by pull what do you mean by stash how to uh, you know solve the uh, conflict merge over there so people are totally not aware of it you should know what do you mean by pr process when i take interviews then if you're not aware of the pr process then how will you uh, work with a team over there nobody is going to help you for the basic uh, single command over there right so in that case guys it's very simple please try to learn get up with the complete pr process and everything what to do the what to be in the merging how to do a push and pull conflicts resolutions and everything you should know about it so these are the basic things along with the aws azure or gcp that is google cloud platform you should know about it that is something i think very very important these days at least one uh, cloud tool you can pick over here infrastructure tool that you can pick maybe aws is a, is a number one top priority because uh, still 80% market capture by aws only so i think i would go with the aws over here so once all these things are done guys i would advise you to go with the performance uh, testing that is a non functional part so whatever we have seen so far these tools are supporting with respect to functional part i'm not talking about infrastructure right now and then the performance testing guys the three major tools are available uh, jmeter gatling and the load runner load runner you can skip as of now because it's a license it's very expensive and it's not every tool sorry every company they are using this particular tool jmeter is always a number one priority number one choice for most of the companies but gatling is very very popular these days if you really looking for a tool which is where you really want to design one script based automation framework for the performance testing then i think i would go with the gatling which supports a functional programming that is scala which is quite easy to write a test cases on top of uh, java uh, scala works and you can easily write some really good load simulations also you can do that some amazing report you can generate over there and then you can uh, generate some heavy load you can handle you can simulate with gatling because it does not work upon the thread based concept it's work on the user based concept so jmeter gatling i would advise you to learn it's very very simple jmeter is completely very simple uh, uh, gui is available user interface is available you should know different plugins jmeter features a uh, correlation manual correlation and automatic correlation you should know about it and same thing in gatling also you should know how to write a script over there and how to uh, simulate the load over there and then how to write the some really good load test cases over there because when you get a quick requirement that time it will help you and it will give you an x factor in your profile in resume also at the time of interview so i would advise you go with jmeter and gatling both together i can give you so many example with gatling gozak is there walmart is there netflix is there amazon is also working with the uh, with gatling six is also working with gatling there are so many startups where heavy load simulations are required in that case gatling is very popular with scala in the market these days so this is the overall guys i have not written some high fund tools over there or so many tools over there i don't want to confuse you I don't believe that everyone should know about the full stack QA kind of stuff. This is not full stack. In every layer, you should know at least have some basic knowledge about web, mobile, and API. If you are really starting your career in automation from the manual testing, or you are having some basic knowledge, or maybe still in automation, what should be the next step? I would advise you spend three four months on these tools, set your target, set your milestone, and try to learn these things, and then you should uh, switch, and then you go for the interviews. or in your company also if you are looking for some mobile automation or maybe api automation you should uh, do after this particular maybe training or maybe some uh, some courses you can attend whatever it's totally your choice there are so many free sources are available in the market on youtube you just go there and just watch it and then try to learn such things so this these are the things should be there in your bucket in your profile guys but on top of that programming basics of programming you should know about it and if you really interested after that 
if you really want to crack some really good product companies in the market like we have amazon or all the farm companies or maybe google or amazon walmart such kind of companies are available in the market then in that case you should go with the data structure algorithms complex algorithms you should solve hacker ranks such kind of things lead codes such good programming questions are available then you should know in that direction as well but not a uh, very starting over here start with the basics try to learn get the confidence and then focus on some other some some really really good uh, product companies in the market so this is a quick video guys that i really want to cover i hope uh, it is useful for you guys let me know if you have any issues with that if any concern or any uh, questions feel free to put in the comment section definitely i'll try to reply you over there subscribe to the channel and press the notification for the next video you will be notified automatically guys there are a lot of good series and good videos are coming on my channel so please subscribe and keep watching the video automation apps till then take care and god bless you all